Ms. Wilson here. Today, let's talk about how to factor the sum and the difference of two cubes. And so the first thing that we need to do is to first make sure that we have the perfect cubes right there. So we can have x cubed. So that's a perfect cube. 27 is a perfect cube and negative 27 as well. And the next thing is to identify whether that's addition or subtraction so that we know that that's the sum, that's the difference. And then what happens is that next step is to write down the formula just to remind ourselves how to do the factorization. So for the sum, we can actually write down the formula. So we have something q plus something q. Okay, as you can see here. And so what happens is that for the first turn, we are going to have the A here. And then the other, uh, the second turn, we have a B on the inside. So that would be equal to what do we get here? We are going to get something with a plus sign right here. And then what is that? That's going to be A. And then the other expression will be the B. And then so continuing with the trinomial here, we are going to have the A and then there was a square, and then minus, and then a times b. So a, we have the b here, and then plus, and then we also will have the b here. But then there is also a square, so don't forget. So now we can actually write the sum of two cubes as this expression right here. And so all we need to do is that we are going to just go from this expression and then figure out what a is, what b is, and then we can just fill in that formula. So now if we look at this x cubed plus 27, we can first think about writing it as the sum of two cubes right here. Okay, so now how do we fill in? Um, first, a to the cube is x to the cube, so we can tell easily that a is really just x, okay? So x cube is just x cube. And then now the next thing is to think about what number do we cube so that we can get 27. And so the answer in this case would be 3 because 3 cube is 27, so b is 3. And now once we get this expression, you can see that this expression is the same thing as our original expression. So what's next is that we can simply just go from here and then write down all those signs right here, right? And then now fill in the information. So x is a, right? So we have the x here and then the x here and then also the x here. See that that's easy. And then next is that we got to fill in the b, which is a three. So we get the three here, the three here, and then also the three here. But there is still something that we need to make sure that we don't forget. It's the square for the first turn and the last term for the trinomial that we are getting in the factorization. So put the square there. And then of course, this one is not fully simplified, so we can actually simplify it. And so eventually the answer will be x plus three, and then x squared minus, usually put the number in the front of the variable, so we get three x, and then plus three squared is nine. So we just figure out that the answer will be this. So we can factor the x, uh, x cubed plus 27 as this expression. Okay, and then you may say, what about the one with the minus sign? The one with the minus sign is almost the same thing as this formula. We just need to make a little bit of the um, modification from this formula, and then we can actually get that one. Okay, so the other formula is that we can actually just, again, we can just write uh, the difference of two cubes right here, and then we have something with the minus sign right here, and then we have something square and then uh, plus. And then there was still the plus here, okay, with the square. And now we're, as you can see, that we are just modifying this expression right here. And what do we fill in there? So we have the a, we have the um, the a here, the a here, and then the a here, okay. And then what about the other? The other turn is the b, the b here, the b here, and then the b here. And so, how is this one different from that one? It's really just the um, the signs, as you can see. So if we have a plus sign right here, then we also get a plus sign here for the binomial. And if we have a minus here, we also have a minus sign here for the, for the binomial. Now, what about this sign right here? This sign is actually the opposite of this sign. So if we have a plus in the binomial, then we have a minus here. If we have a minus in the binomial, then we have a plus here. And what about the last one? What about this sign here? It's always positive. So there is actually an easy way for us to remember. We can actually say something like, um, so we can actually use the idea for the soap. And then you may say, what? What's going on here? Well, this one, this S means same sign. 
Okay, so the, the same sign here. Oh, actually, let me just let me just write it up here. So same sign. Okay, so soap. The S stands for the same sign, and then the plus right here. This one is the the O stands for opposite. Opposite sign. Okay, so opposite means what? It's actually relative to whatever sign that you have here. If you have minus here, then it will be plus. If you have plus here, then it will be minus. So that's what it means by opposite sign. What about this last one here? This last one is, this last one is always positive. And so together, it's same, opposite, always positive. So S-O-A-P, soap. And that will actually help you remember how to put the sign. Okay, so now what about this example here? We can just do it quickly. Um, <clears throat> so we know that the X is still just the, the A, right? And then the B is a 3 in this case. And then you may say, shouldn't that be negative 3? But we already put the minus sign here. So we can still pretend that is 3 cubed because we put the minus sign here. So that minus sign goes here. Okay, so now just filling in that and then we have... Um, we have the answer to be what x minus 3 as you can see here and then what do we get here x squared right so we just put the x squared here and then plus okay plus that's the opposite sign of this minus sign here and then 3x and then plus b squared 3 squared 9 and then we finish. As you can see here, I didn't really show as many details as the uh, the previous example. It's really because once we get the idea, we can actually go faster. So we don't need to just um, plug into the formula. We can actually just look at the A, look at the B, and then start filling in the information and then writing down the final answer. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Now, we just did those two examples. Right now, we are going to uh, just focus on the difference of two cubes. The reason for why I'm showing these two examples side by side is really because I want to show that um, how to handle the situation when we have um, the two turns that are almost the same as you can see that the the order is different so this one the x cube comes first and then the other one the 64 comes first the reason for why they're different is really because the uh, subtraction is not cumulative and so just like when you compute 5 minus 2 and 2 minus 5 you're not getting the same answer so they're actually opposite of each other and how does that change our answer uh they're almost the same answers but then there are still a little bit of details that are different okay so let's look at the details here so now first we are going to just write down the formula again so we have the something cute minus something cute and then it's equal to now remember that i just talked about uh the signs using the soap, right, as you can see. So what happens is that first, let's just write them down here. So there was a binomial, there was a trinomial, and then it would be soap, S-O, and then A-P, right? And so how does that work? First, same sign means that we just take the same sign right here. Opposite means that it will be opposite of whatever sign that you have here. And so it will be plus. And then always positive means that it will be a plus right here. And then so now we just fill in the A, the A, and then the A, and then the A here, and then here with the B, 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 and then B. And don't forget there is still square and square for the first turn and the last turn of the trinomial. Okay, so now we have the formula and then let's do this x cubed minus 64. Okay, so for this, we are going to just get what x Okay, and then, yeah, so as you can see that it will be x cubed minus. And then the 64, what should we get for um, for the b? As you can see here, something raised to the third power, okay, would be 64. So in this case, it will be 4 to the third power 64. So now we can see that a is x, b is 4, and then we can start writing down the answer. So it would be what? For the binomial, it will be a minus b, which is x minus 4. So we can simply just put x and then minus 4 here. Okay, so that's easy. And then this one, let's put them down, okay, with a square and the square here. And so we can see that a, we've just put it here. We get a squared, there was an x here, and then 
Now the B, B is what, four? So we put the four here, four here. And then of course we still need to simplify this expression right here. So finally we get X minus four and then X squared plus four X and then plus 16. And so as you can see that we just factor that. Now, what about the 64 minus X cubed? We still just get X and four as the A and the B. The difference is that a is not x anymore this time. A would actually be what? So let's move it up a little bit. So now you can see that this time, if we just look at the second one here, the 64 minus x cubed, what happens is that we are going to just get the uh, the A as the four, four cubed is 64 minus, minus, and then what is that? That will be x here, okay? And then so now the only difference, as you can see, it's really just switching the A and the B. So in this case, we have four, four, and then we have four, and then uh, the other one, it will be X, and then X here, and then X here. Don't forget, there is a square, square. And do you see what's going on here? If you just compare this expression and that expression, the A is, this time it's the four, and then the B is what is the X. And then so everything is switch. Yeah, so that is the only difference. And then so of course we gotta simplify this. So we are gonna get four minus X, and then we have 16 plus four X, and then plus X squared. Now, if you pay a little bit more attention to the trinomial here, you can see that they're actually the same thing. What is the difference? The difference is actually x minus four and then the four minus x, they're actually opposite of each other. Yeah, this is really just the same thing as um, when you just rewrite this expression by factoring out negative one from both terms, we get negative and then we have x cubed minus 64 and so do you see that this expression right here is the same thing as that expression? And so if we are to factor this by first ignoring the minus sign, then we are going to just get what? We are just going to get with the minus sign right here, bringing it down. And this expression, as we factor it here, we are going to get x minus 4. And then we have x squared plus 4x plus 16. So as you can see, I'm just copying from this expression. So just to tell you that you can see that that's the same expression right here. Oh, well, actually, I shouldn't be highlighting the, um, the, the minus sign, right? So you can see that that is really just the same expression right here. Do you see that there is an additional minus sign right here? And what happens is that if you distribute this minus sign to both turns in here, okay, then do you see what's going on here? We are just going to get four because it's negative four, so now positive four, and then x becomes negative x, and then the trinomial doesn't really change as you can see. And we are still getting the same answer as you can see here. As you can see, we are still getting the same answer. Okay, so now let's look at another, uh, the more difficult examples right now, once we understand all the details. Okay, continuing with more examples. This one is the sum of two cubes. And as you can see that the A is a perfect cube, the X cube is a perfect cube, 27 is a perfect cube. So that means we can actually factor this by using the perfect cube formula. Okay, so how do we do it? First, we are going to just write down the formula. We are gonna write down something cube plus something cube, right? And then we just need to fill in those A and B in there. So we have um, now the binomial and then the trinomial. Okay, so first, the signs, right, is the SOAP, S-O-A-P, as you can see. And then what do we do here? Same sign, right, as you can see that that's plus, so we get plus here. Opposite means that it will be opposite of this sign or that sign, right, they're the same. So opposite, minus, and then always positive, so we get the plus here. So now let's fill in the, the, uh, the A and the B. So as you can see, this is A. This is B, right? And so this is A, this is B, and then A square, A, B here, and then the um, the B. Oh, actually, I should be using a different color for the B, right? So we are going to get the B here, and then there is a B here, there is a B here, and then so we have, yeah, so the square, square, 
Okay, now how do we fill in all that information? And so first, let's think about this. Something to the third power gives us the eight. That something must be two. So two cubed is eight. And then something to the third power must be x cubed. So obviously that will be x. So see that this one is not 8x because if you put the 8 in here, 8 cubed is a lot bigger than the 8. So we actually need to put the 2 here. So 2 cubed is 8. And now what about this b here? b is actually just 3. 3 to the third power is 27. So we have we already figured out the a and the b. And then we just need to fill into the formula. So we are going to have, I'm missing the B right here. So there is a B. So now the A is what? 2X. Okay. And then what about the B here? The B is going to be just 3. So that's easy. Now this one is a little bit tricky because when it's A squared, right? So if it's A squared, if you just put 2X with the square here, that's wrong because you need to square the the whole a, it's not just squaring the x. This means squaring the x, but it's not squaring the two. So we gotta be careful. And so we need to put a pair of parentheses to indicate that the square applies to the two as well. Okay, that's really important. Otherwise it will be the wrong answer. And then the a, b is actually the easy one. So two x times three. So we can simply just put in two x for the a and then the, uh, the three for the b. Right, so that one is easy. And then this is multiplication, as you can see. So you can put a dot there to indicate the multiplication to just remind yourself. And then what about the B? The B is three, so you can just put the three here. And then this one, because there is only one factor, so we don't really need to put parentheses. If you want, you can still put a, per, a pair of parentheses around three, it's up to you. Um, but we can simply just put three square here. And eventually we got to simplify this. So we are going to get two X plus three. And then what do we get here? This one square the two. So not just squaring the X, but also square the two. So we get four X square and then minus. This is two X times three. We get six X as you can see. Okay, and then the last one we get what plus nine. So we get the nine right here. So that is our factorization for this AX cubed plus 27. Um, so it's extremely easy to forget the parentheses from my experience. And so I would say that sometimes you may not even need to bother with this step when you become better. So the easier way to do this, it's actually better is that once you figure out the A and the B, then what happens is that this is what I usually would do. So let's just try, um, let's just try again, right? So what happens is that once I figure out the A and the B, I am just going to put down 2x plus 3, okay? And then when I put down the A square, I'm just going to just uh, square this and then put it here. So if I square it, what, what am I getting? I'm going to get 4, square the 2, square the x, we get 4x square okay and then minus as you can see that that's the opposite sign multiply them together so two times three we get six and then x and then lastly plus the nine and that doing that not only that it's faster but you can also skip the step with needing to put the parentheses but of course uh, this step is actually uh, essential for understanding what's going on if you are just first learning this Okay, so um, when you become better, you can actually jump from this step to this step, or even from the beginning to this step, as you can see what A is and what B is in your head. Okay, so uh, let's look at another example. We are going to uh, increase the level of difficulty for the example, so let's look at the next example. Now we have a more difficult example. And as you can see that the numbers actually get larger, but we still need to just check quickly at the beginning that uh, we do have the difference of two cubes. 27 is a perfect cube. X cube is a perfect cube. 64 is a perfect cube. Y is Y cube is a perfect cube. So everything is a perfect cube here. So that means we can actually still just use the formula. The difference between this example and the previous example that we were just doing was that there was an additional variable here, but that actually will make uh, the problem a lot more difficult. Just a little bit, just a little bit more um, work in this case. Um, <clears throat> So first, we can just start writing down the formula again. So the difference of two cubes, as you can see. And then what happens is that there is the binomial. And then there is also the trinomial. Okay. And so same thing here. Start with the signs first. 
Okay, so what happens is the same sign. Same sign means that there was a minus sign right here, same sign. Opposite means that we get a plus here, always positive. So just put a plus here. And so we are actually ready to fill in. So we have the A here, and then we have the, what? what is that, the B here. And so there was the A here, and then B. And then what is that? This one is A square, as you can see, A square, right? And then AB. And then the B square. Okay, so now, how do we fill in the A and the B first? That's really important to figure out. So we got to think about something that when we cube, we are going to get 27. So that something is 3. And then also X here, X cube is what? X cube. Okay, so A is 3X. What about B? B is, um, so 4 to the third power is 64. So we get the 4 here. But we also need the y, right? So we need to put a y here because y cube is y cube, as you can see. So now b is 4y. And so this binomial is always easy to write down because that's really just filling in the a and the b. So it's 3x minus 4y, okay? Now, remember in the previous example, I actually just talked about um, there was a spot for common errors, right? So in this case, it's actually easy to make mistake when you forget the parentheses. So rather than worrying about not forgetting to put the parentheses, then I mean, worry about forgetting to put the parentheses, then it's actually easier if we just square those ones right here. So then you may say, what, what does that mean? How do we get the a square? Well, we can actually get the a square, right? We can just write down this step right here. We actually want the a square and then we also want the b square so that that will make things a lot easier. So you square the 3, we get what? We are going to get the um, the 9. 3 square is 9. x square, okay? So square both factors right here. Same thing here, we square it. So we are going to get 16. 4 square is 16. y square is y square, right? And so we can put those in here. And then we don't need to worry about putting in the parentheses anymore. So we get 9x square. The other one is going to be what? 16y square. So see that that's a lot easier. And then now the ab, it's actually the one that we, uh, well, it's just copying the a and the b. So that's easy. So for, uh, 3x, right? And then times the 4y. And of course, this requires us to do a little bit of simplifying, but at least we don't make the mistake for the a square and the b square anymore. So right now we can write down the final answer and then we are going to get 3x minus 4y, right? From this expression right here. And then we are going to get what? 9x squared plus, this is <clears throat> just multiplication. So three times four is 12. And then there was an x and y. And then what do we get here? 16y squared. And then that's it. So we are done with the factorization. We factor this expression and we get this answer. Okay, so it's actually a cleaner process when you do it this way because you don't need to worry about uh, the parentheses. Sometimes it's just there are more rooms for mistake when you do more steps in here. Okay, as long as you understand it, it actually doesn't really matter whether you... Um, you keep writing all those steps right there with all the details because sometimes it, when you write more, there is more room for mistake, but then, but of course you need to make sure that you understand what's going on. Okay. So before we end the video, there was another example that I want to show you, which is quite different from the ones that we have been working with, but will require the sum and the difference of cubes formula. Okay. So let's look at that example. Now, here's the last example for this video. And then by just looking at it, there are two terms right here. You may say, okay, so that sounds like uh, uh, the sum, right? Because of the plus right here, that the, that's the sum of the uh, two cubes. But the problem is that if you just look at it here, there is an x squared here. That's not a perfect cube unless... Um, there is some number that is a perfect cube when you substitute into the x, but that's not what we are going to worry about right now. So if you just look at that, then um, that is a square. And what about the fifth power? That's also not a perfect cube either if you just um, keeping this generic x right here. So the problem is that can we still do it? Well, first, you can see that there is a common, there is a greatest common factor from both terms right here. So what we are going to do is that first, we need to do something, which is the factor of the, the GCF, the greatest common factor. 
and then we'll worry about whether that's the sum of two cubes later. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So we are going to just factor out the x squared right here, as you can see, because there is the x squared in the x to the fifth, and then also there is the x squared in this 125 x squared. So after you pull out the x squared, we are going to get what? We are going to get x to the third power because um, according to the rules of exponents, then <clears throat> If we factor out the x squared from the x to the fifth, we are supposed to be getting x to the third because those two numbers, those two exponents should add up to five, as you can see. So we get an x cubed here and then plus, and then this one, we factor out the x squared, so we are left with just 125. And now, this one is the sum of two cubes and we can now use the formula. And then you may say, what about the x squared? Just leave it in the front, but just don't forget to keep it in front of the final answer. Okay, so right now we are going to just focus on factoring this expression. Yeah, so let's write it down. So we have the x cubed here and then plus the x cubed here. And then we are going to get, yeah, so again, binomial and then trinomial. So signs, right? Soap, as you can see here. So now same sign, opposite, always positive. So see that it's getting quicker now. Now, the A here and then the B here. So we try to figure out the A. What is the A? A is what, just X, X cubed is X cubed. And then what is B? B is five because five cubed is 125. So now we figure out the A and the B. So it's, it, we are actually ready to just fill in this factorization here. Um, so A is, supposed to be put here and then the b is supposed to be put here so that's a plus b so x plus five and then we are going to get the x square this one there is only one factor for both a and b so we don't need the parentheses anymore and <clears throat> what about the b the b is going to be squaring the five so we are going to get 25 right here so squaring that 25 and then in the middle it's a times b as you can see so what is that? That's going to be five and then X. So A, B, right? Usually put the uh, the number in the front of the variable. So that's why we put the B first. And so we get five X. So that is our factorization for this X cubed plus 125. And our final answer, going back to this expression right here, don't forget the GCF. So we still got to keep the GCF in the front, X squared. And then I'll copy down this result here. So we get X plus five, and then we get x squared minus five x plus 25, and then we are finished. So that's our factorization, okay? So uh, we have done several examples right here. I hope that now after watching all these examples, you can master how to factor the sum and the difference of two cubes. Next time we are going to do more complicated examples, okay? So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please share and subscribe. I will see you next time.